artist Lillian Gray and today's lesson is all about color. ever felt overwhelmed with color? Do you keep on mixing muddy dirty colors and you generally just feel lost? Do you ever wonder how some artists seem to just have it? They always come up with the perfect color combinations and it just works every time? Well, it's not just art, it's science and we call it color theory. In this video, I'm not just going to show you the color wheel but actually teach you how to use it. We will also cover basic color formulas known as color harmonies or color schemes, and these help you to choose color combinations that are appealing and cohesive. First things first, you need to know that there are various color wheels, and depending on the discipline that you are busy with, there are different color wheels. These color wheels are important, but we'll talk about them in a different video. This video will be focusing on the traditional color wheel developed by Isaac Newton. It is still our best resource for understanding color harmony and how colors work together to create beautiful artworks. Our wheel uses 12 main colors, but we can also work with all the colors in between. So let's start with the basic color wheel. It's important for you to understand the color wheel so that you can empower yourself to properly mix colors and to choose different cohesive color palettes. All you need to start are the three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. All other colors can be created mixing these in different ways. The secondary colors, purple, green, and orange, are created by mixing primary colors. Red and blue makes purple, blue and yellow makes green, and yellow and red makes orange. Tertiary colors are created by mixing a primary color with a secondary color. These are red orange, red purple, blue purple, blue green, yellow green, and yellow orange. Now we have our basic color wheel. To recap, you start with the primaries, mix those to create secondaries, and then mix one of each to create tertiaries. Now let's move on to color vocabulary. We need to cover some basic terms to help you understand and to empower you to talk about color theory. A U is just a fancy way of talking about color. It is simply the name of the color, like red, blue, green, yellow, and orange. Those are all U's. Saturation refers to the intensity or purity of a color and can also be called chroma. This tells us how vibrant a color is. High saturation means the color is really bright. And desaturation means the color looks washed out and grayed out. Value refers to the degree of lightness or darkness of a color. This value scale shows you a full range of values. A shade is a hue produced by adding black. So here you have a variety of shades of blue made by mixing the blue with increasing amounts of black. A tint is a color produced by adding white. So now you have a variety of blue tints made by mixing the blue with increasing amounts of white. A tone is a color produced by adding gray. So now you have a variety of blue tones made by mixing blue with increasing amounts of gray. The color wheel can be split into two main groups, warm colors and cool colors. When artists talk about warm colors, they usually mean reds, oranges, and yellows. Cool colors refers to purples, blues, and greens. But individual colors can also change in temperature as we move around the color wheel. A warm red includes more yellow, and a cool red includes more blue. Opposite temperatures create visual contrast and have different psychological effects. Generally, warm colors appear bright, cheerful, happy, while cool colors appear dark, mysterious, gloomy, and even sad. This is not 
always the case though. It really depends on how you present the colors. Now you know all the fancy color lingo. Let's move on. So how do we use all of these colors together? We can use our 12 basic hues on the color wheel, along with some easy to follow formulas to create an endless collection of color combinations that look balanced, that's appealing, and that can make your work wow. These formulas are known as color harmonies or color schemes. By using and understanding color harmonies, you can create a mood, a story, and really be in control of the communication of your artwork. When you don't use color harmony, your art can appear bland, boring, or maybe even chaotic. Here are some of the most common types of color schemes. A monochromatic color scheme is made up of one color plus either black, white, or gray. Here you have a variety of tints, tones, and shades of blue. It's one of the easiest color harmonies to create. Looks simple, cohesive, and organized. Complementary colors sit across from each other on the color wheel. The most common pairs are red and green, purple and yellow, orange and blue. Putting these next to each other creates great contrast and visual interest. But just a word of caution, they can easily overpower each other, so it's important to use them carefully and with skill. An analogous color scheme is made up of two or four colors sitting next to each other on the color wheel. This is one of the simplest and most appealing color harmonies and works best if you choose one dominant color and then use the other colors as accents. Here is just a few examples of analogous color schemes. A triadic color scheme is made up of three colors that are evenly spaced around the color wheel, like a triangle. These color combinations are often bold and vibrant. A split complementary color scheme is similar to a complementary color scheme, except one of the colors is split into two nearby colors. This keeps the high contrast of the complementary color scheme, but it also adds a little bit more variety. A tetradic color scheme is made up of four colors arranged into two complementary pairs. Now, I know some of you are feeling, oh my word, this is overwhelming. But don't worry, after you started applying these methods, you'll start to pick up an intuition for color, a color confidence that just really works well. These different color harmonies are a great guide to create colors that work well together. But just remember, you can also create more variety by changing the shades, the tones, the tints within each color palette, giving you endless ways to mix and match color that looks great. I always tell my students, first know the rules, then break them. Think of the color wheel as a fun dance floor where you get to skip and hop around in different patterns to really get to understand color. Now that you are super clued up and smart regarding color, let's play a game and see if you can identify which color schemes these famous paintings are using. First up, we've got this bluish painting. Bonus points for those who can guess the color scheme and the artist who painted this before I tell you. Yes, it's a monochromatic color scheme. It uses blue with variations by adding black, white and gray. So blue with various shades, tones and tints. Did you know that this painting was created in a time but when Picasso was really, really sad and depressed, you see his friend died and he was feeling very, very lonely. So for almost four years, Picasso only painted monochromatic paintings and we call this his blue period. So this is also interesting because now you can see how the color temperatures and the mood that it evokes actually also play a role in this artwork. Now, how about this painting? Yes, you've guessed it. It's also a monochromatic color scheme. But what Picasso has done, he's added a little bit of brown. Now, here and there in his monochromatic blue period, he often did that. Painted predominantly in blue by adding a touch of brown for warmth. 
Next up is a painting of two harlequins. What color scheme is being used here? It is an analogous color scheme. Yes, I know it's tricky, but look at this. It predominantly uses the red, purples and blues that's found next to each other on the color wheel. The reds and blues aren't vibrant. They are desaturated, dull and a bit grayed out. So various tones of these reds and blues were used. Now for interest's sake, this painting is also done by Picasso. And this is a period that's sometimes called the red period, but better known as the rose period. What on earth could have made Picasso make such a dramatic switch from the blue depressing period to this fun rose period using lots of harlequins and clowns? You guessed it, he fell in love! So the red here suggests a lot of passion. Let's move on to a different famous artist, a true master of color theory. What color scheme is this painting? Bonus points if you can guess the artist as well. Yes, it's complimentary. This painting is painted by the famous artist Claude Monet. How beautiful is the contrast and vibrancy between the red and the green? Claude Monet is famous for his water lily paintings, and most of them use a specific color scheme. Can you guess it? It's an analogous color scheme. These colors are next to each other on the color wheel, all the blues and greens grouped together. This is a beautiful painting that Claude Monet did of his wife, Camille, and his son. And what is the color scheme? Analogous again. And this is a great example to show you that cool colors, the cold colors of the color wheel, doesn't always need to be sad. I find this painting quite happy and positive. This is a vibrant, beautiful painting Monet did in Venice. And the color scheme is complementary, using blue and orange on the opposite sides of the color wheel. This painting is so vibrant, intense, using high saturation of colors. Let's consider this one, the famous painting called Impression Sunrise, which the whole Impressionist art movement was named after. Yes, it's also a complementary color scheme, but quite different. The colors are desaturated, dull and grayed out. This helps Monet to create that early morning mist, fogginess of the harbor. The Impressionist artists were really fascinated by color. This painting is quite tricky. Can you see the color scheme? It's a triadic color scheme. You see it makes a little triangle on the color wheel. It uses orange, purple and blue. You see the Impressionists really embraced color because they were very much opposed to the Industrial Revolution that was taking place. Cities were filling up with smog and steam engines and a lot of pollution and people generally felt that machines were taking away jobs in this painting, Monet uses a monochromatic color scheme. It captures the smog and the smoke that the trains created in Paris at the time. Being absolutely fascinated by color, Monet often did a color series where he would take the same object and paint it at different times of day. As the day progresses and the sun rises and sets, the color temperatures and color reflections on the object would change. Here's a bit of a curve ball. In this painting, we see two pairs of complementary colors, green and red and orange and blue. And that makes a square on the color wheel called a tetradic color scheme. Ever wonder why Story Story Night by Vincent van Gogh was such a major crowd pleaser? It's because of its color theory. It uses complementary colors. 
He's got this vibrancy, this intense contrast that he creates between the orange and the Prussian blue. Your eyes literally dot around the painting between the orange and the dark blue, giving the night sky its shimmering effect. What color scheme does Van Gogh's famous sunflowers use? Analogous, the colors are next to each other on the color wheel. Van Gogh is truly a master of color and often used complementary colors in his artwork to create vibrancy. But he often danced around the color wheel using various color combinations. Look at these beautiful pots of irises. What is the color scheme? Analogous. Van Gogh also used more complicated color schemes. Can you spot this one? It creates a triangle on the color wheel, a triadic color scheme. In this painting, Van Gogh uses an interesting color scheme. It is a split complementary color scheme. Instead of the high contrast created by green and red, he veers to the sides of the green and uses the color adjacent to the green in this painting. Artist Johannes Vermeer is famous for using split complementary in a highly successful way. Instead of using the blue and orange, he veers off just slightly and often uses blue and yellow in his paintings. If we jump through time and hop over to the pop art movement, we get to see the awesome colorful paintings of Andy Warhol. This is one of my favorite series about endangered species. One of the first things I've noticed about this series is Andy's amazing command and use of the color wheel. Can you help me identify which two major color schemes he uses? Some of them uses the famous complementary pairs, orange and blue, purple and yellow, green and red. The other screen prints in this series uses the triangle color scheme, known as the triadic color scheme. And so Andy Warhol moves freely around the color wheel, creating some really interesting and striking color combinations in his artwork. Now let's make your art awesome! Here are some of my general color mixing tips. First of all, general cleanliness. Keep your brushes, your turpentine or your water really clean. Know what not to mix. Do not mix complementary colors with each other. You will get mud. Then, probably the most important tip of all is observe, observe, observe. Study your reference. When you get lost, sit on your hands, sit back and observe. Take the time to match your colors correctly to your reference. You can do this by holding your mixed color on your paintbrush next to your reference and make sure it is a correct match. If you struggle to identify the exact hue, use a viewfinder to isolate the color that helps your eye to be less confused. There's lots of other different tips and tricks that I use for various mediums. Here are some of my helpful tips for when I'm doing oil paint. And for watercolors. I'll do videos on these later. Here are tips for general color choices. First, pick one dominant color. Whichever color harmony you choose, using one dominant color will create a sense of balance in your artwork. You can choose one main color and then use the rules of color harmonies to find other colors that work as accents or that would be great for smaller details in your artwork. Another tip I'd like to share is to limit yourself to just a few colors. Remember, simple is best. Adding too many colors to your artwork can quickly become overwhelming and chaotic to your viewers. Choosing just a few colors and really mastering them and applying them can create bold but simple and interesting artworks. Another thing to consider when mixing color is that a color is always two things. It's not just one. So ask yourself, is this a warm red or is it a cool red? So it's not just a red, it's either warm or cold. Which way is it leaning on the color wheel? Same goes for all the other colors. Is it a warm green or a cool green? So now that you know most of the color theory, how are you going to challenge yourself in your next artwork? Maybe you should be 
making an analogous painting, or try your hand at a complementary colour scheme artwork. That's our lesson on colour. I hope you guys now know what is different values, hues, tints and shades, and how to use them all. And I hope you guys understand the colour wheel. I'm artist Lillian Gray and I hope you enjoyed this video. I simply love teaching art. Like and subscribe, ring the bell and meet us on social media. Visit our website and buy our amazing worksheets to understand the seven elements of art. This is a great tool to save teachers time and for students to really learn how to apply the seven elements. The link to buy these worksheets are in the description below.